Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. And as always, I am on a obsessive kick <laughs> with flat shaker cards and this color combo. Although I love rainbow 365, you know, all the time. But this combo in particular, because these inks have just been making me happy. So for this video, I wanted to make slimline flat shaker cards. If you've missed my previous couple of videos, I recommend checking them out. I've been experimenting with this whole technique, as it were. I don't know what you want to call it. It's fun. So I've got a couple pieces of Simon's Smooth White cardstock, and I'm working on my magnetic tonic um, metal mat that I'm very much liking. And I'm using several of Simon's dye inks. Same as the last couple of videos because they're sitting here and I'm enjoying and I, I just, I don't know, I'm loving these colors together. Like really loving them. So I use Clementine and as just habit with me, I always start with like the yellow color when I'm doing a rainbow of anything. Um, not only just out of habit, but also because um, yellow is the lightest color most likely to pick up other colors and get, you know, muddy, etc. So it's just easier to start there and then work my way out. So I did that clementine and then I add the watermelon and then green apple and then I'll go to scuba and then hot mama. And as always, my blending doesn't look that great. My camera just seems to make it, it always makes my blending look like crap. <laughs> However, these inks, like I've mentioned in other videos, they smooth out as they dry, regardless of whether you're ink blending with them or stamping with them, anything like that. As they dry and soak into the paper, they just create just the smoothest effect. Effect. And then the other reason I specifically wanted to stick with these inks for this technique is because I'm going to stencil over it and these inks are not water reactive at all. So they will not react if I add paste on top, if I add other inks on top, anything like that, they will not move. So it just, it depends on what I'm doing, um, different things, but that is also, it's just a really nice thing not to have the inks like react with anything because I'm gonna stencil over it and then I'm actually gonna add paste over it because I was just curious to see what would happen. So I've done my blending. And then I actually just used a little bit of my repositionable tape to hold the panel in place on my um, metal mat here. And then I'm holding the stencil I'm using in place with just the magnets. So this is the Fading Stars stencil from Simon. It's a slimline stencil, which is fabulous. I've been saying that a lot lately. I love seeing more like slimline size or just larger stencils in general because it just gives you more options. So I've got that stencil and I'm blending just Simon's black ink. This is not the intense black, like this isn't the Copic friendly ink. This is the black ink that is the same formula as their all the colors. So same idea. This ink does not react with water. It just stays put. And I purposely wanted to use this because I want to get the crispness of the stencil because the paste I'm going to use is not crisp, I guess is the word I'm trying to, uh, well, I'll get to it anyway. So I blended that over and honestly, you could leave it like this. This was fabulous. <laughs> I loved how the stars looked like just that, you know, that pop of black stars on top of the rainbow background. But again, I just, I had ideas. I was experimenting. So I'm going to blend this again, just using a blending brush and blend this ink over the stencil. Um, like I said, these inks are not water reactive, so they're a little trickier to clean sometimes off surfaces, off of stencils, etc. I use my stamp cleaner because even sometimes soap and water doesn't do the trick. Um, just, it's just whatever that is put into these inks. So, um, yeah, I, I will literally just use my stamp cleaner and like spray the stencil with that. It comes off and you'll see it later. I'm going to reuse this stencil and I've got it all cleaned off. So again, you could leave it here, but I was curious to see what would happen. <laughs> so I have this stickles. This is called, this one is called dark matter glitter gel. And I've used other glitter gels. Like I bought the entire pack way back in the day. That was like, goodness, a year or two ago when these were released. Um, I'll link to the pack, but I'll link this individually. These are really interesting. Um, I've used some of the other ones in other videos. They have a very 
goopy, I guess is the way. Like, it's almost like hair gel in a sense. It's weird. If you've worked with paste, you know how different pastes have different textures, etc. And this is something very unique in a sense when you're working with it. It's just, it's goopy. I don't know how else to, to describe it. It's very interesting. But the thing is with this is after you've applied it, once it, as it dries, it dries extremely flat. So it's, it's goopy when you work with it. Like, yeah, almost like hair gel. It's got all these different types of glitters. So there's these different shapes and everything, but it will dry flat. So I just applied it over my stencil and then um, off camera, I like kind of scrape everything off the stencil and my little plastic palette knife here. And then, like I said, I use my stamp cleaner, it cleans the stencil off good, but like any glitter gel, you clean it immediately. Like just, just take my word for it. Glitter gel likes to harden basically into cement. It is not fun to deal with after it's dry, but if you clean it up ahead of time, you're good to go. So the other thing I like to do, and I've shown this in a lot of videos, is I use a little bit of press and seal. You could use regular plastic wrap, anything like that. I will link to the press and seal that I use. And I put a little square of that over any of my glitter paste, embossing paste, etc. It keeps them from drying out. So since this was the first time I was using it, I cut a little square of my press and seal, sealed the jar, it'll be good to go. I have yet to have any of my paste dry out with when I use press and seal. So I did that. I wiped off the excess glitter paste and you can see like even wiping it like the inks on this metal mat aren't moving like they're almost like a hybrid ink really simon's dye inks they like i said they're not water reactive and um, you probably could stamp them on other surfaces other than cardstock i just don't ever do that but to clean it up i just spray it with my um simon's ultra clean stamp cleaner cleans up no problem and that's exactly what i used on um the stencil as well and clean that off, set it aside. So while all that glitter paste is drying, um, depending on how thick you apply it, this does take longer than other paste. Like, again, it just, it has to do with that gel and how it just, it just kind of evaporates as it dries. And then you're just left with that glitter like fused onto the cardstock. It's fun. So I set those aside. I was letting them dry. For the sentiment, I pulled out the CZ Design Thanks sentiment again because this is another just favorite of mine. And I blended the Hot Mama and the Scuba ink onto some cardstock and then die cut those with the outline. You could totally just do black cardstock with this. It would make it stand out more. But I really love how those two inks just kind of blend into each other. Like when I did the backgrounds, I just, there's something about, well, all the colors, but where I was planning on placing these sentiments is where the purple was, you know, blending into the blue. So I was like, Ooh, I'm going to just mimic that with the die cuts. So that's what I did. And then the actual words themselves, I die cut multiple times from white cardstock, stacked them together with the craft tacky glue. So I've got that dimension and then adhered them to those little backgrounds. And then to make these into flat shakers, I have some packaging here. This was actually the packaging that the Tonic Slimline um, Shaker Pockets came in. But Tonics are, for whatever reason, I don't know why, they're three and a half inches by eight inches. I, I, don't, I don't know why. I, and that just bothered me. So I just took the packaging they came in, because I'm not going to throw it out, and I cut it into two pieces, because these are big enough to do both of my card fronts because my slimline cards are three and a half by eight and a half. So I, yeah, it, it just kind of bugs my OCD, but I, I'm still going to use the shaker pouches, the tonic ones. I'm just going to have to make my cards a little bit smaller and that's just going to be weird to me, but I'll make it work. So anywho, I showed this a couple videos ago, how just reusing packaging like this to create, um, flat shaker cards. And it's awesome. I'm going to be doing a ton of these over, while well, just, you know, over my career and hobby and whatever, because they're fun. And this is, again, a great way to use this sort of packaging and all the sequins and confetti and glitter. Oh, I have so much. I have so much. No regrets. It's beautiful and I love it. And now I have even more uses for it. So all I did was put score tape on the back of my panel. You want a really good, strong adhesive score tape or red line tape, just anything really strong is the way to go. And it, I, I prefer like a tape like this 
rather than any sort of liquid adhesive, just because I don't want to be sitting and fiddling and waiting for the liquid adhesive to dry. This is much faster. So I adhere three sides to the back. I cut off the little corners just because they stick up and get in the way. I've left one side open and now I'm literally going to fill it. I went completely overboard. You do not need to add this much, but more is more. <laughs> So I have Studio Caudia um, star-shaped confetti. That was my main like thing to use with these cards. And then I couldn't resist adding more of the rainbow confetti that I used in my last video. Yeah, in the last one, because it's just pretty too. And then I just kept going. Again, I could have just stopped with just one or two, but then I was like, oh, the, the majestic chunky glitter would look beautiful too. And then I added like the big chunky dots. <laughs> so this is what I mean when I said you you could skip adding the stickles um, glitter gel to the stars because in the end you don't really see in real life you do in the video I don't know if you guys can even in the pictures I don't even know if you guys can really see it in real life you can see the the stickles glitter gel and the stars so they've got their own like fun colors and everything but it's just an option. Like I said, I was experimenting to see what would happen. So that's also the why I'm really loving these edge to edge flat shaker cards is you can just have fun with it and fill them up. And even with the amount I'm putting in these and the ones I've made so far, I have not even made a dent in my containers. And I like, I have a lot, but I don't have that much. You know what I mean? So I did that twice to both filled them up with all that you know confetti and glitter and fun stuff and then my card bases are more of the smooth white cardstock these were eight and a half inches by seven so i'm scoring them at three and a half inches so my cards will be three and a half inch by eight and a half inch slimline cards and after i made my card bases i'm going to open these up and i'm going to use that star stencil again i took some copy paper just my the scrap paper that i use to you know stamp off inks and rub my brushes on and all that kind of stuff and I just used that to mask off the other side of the card right past the score line and then I've got the stencil in place and then I'm just using those same inks doing the exact same thing just blending them over this stencil so starting with the clementine then I did the watermelon and the green apple and then the scuba and then the hot mama and again this could totally be a card front because, you know, what rainbow stars, like really, it's just, it's fabulous. So I may, I, again, I might have to do more cards just with, you know, white background and then like rainbow stars or rainbow hearts, etc. <laughs> so repeated the process with the second card base, just blending those inks. Um, this time, of course, the, there's ink on the stencil, the brush is kind of picking it up, etc. But I'm fine with that. And like I said, after I was done with this, I use my stamp cleaner to clean the ink off the stencil because the colors are the same as that black ink. It just doesn't come off generally, even with soap and water. It's, you need like a good stamp cleaner. I recommend like the Ultra Clean. Um, another really good stamp cleaner is the Brutus Monroe stamp cleaner. I have both different formulas, but they do kind of the same thing. So use a good stamp cleaner especially like just on your stamps let alone cleaning stencils etc so once my card bases had the stenciling i'm gonna add this is one of my go-to sentiments i use this in practically all my thank you cards because i love it this is from the xl greetings 2 set and i just folded the card inside out there put it in my misty and then i'm stamping the sentiment with simon's intense black ink so getting that stamped on the inside of the card so the inside now has the sentiment and the rainbow stars and then to adhere the die cut sentiments to the shaker pouches i'm just using a very little bit of glossy accents this is one of the good liquid adhesives that i talk about when it comes to adhering to or adhering um acetate that sort of thing like plastic embellishments little metal embellishments Another good liquid adhesive for this sort of thing would be uh, Ranger's Collage Medium and Multimedia Matte Adhesive. That also works really well. 
I've just been finding that the glossy accents works really good because in case it oozes out at all, you're not really going to notice it. Like if I use multimedia matte and it oozed out, you'd probably see it because the whole card is reflective and shiny and glossy. So hence me using the glossy accents. So I adhered my sentiments. The little sentiment strips are from the reverse gratitude sentiment strips. And I just adhered them with a little bit of my Doris foam strips. And then I coated the back of these with um, that same square tape and then lined that up and adhered them to the card base. So it completely covers the card base. These are edge to edge shaker cards and they're flat. Other than the bit of dimension I added by stacking the sentiment and adding the little sentiment strip with the foam tape, these cards are completely flat. I love it. They're so much fun. And I was going to pair them with black slimline envelopes, but I'm out. <laughs> I need to order more. So I paired them with dandelion slimline envelopes because there's something about rainbow with a bright yellow envelope that, I don't know, I love it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. These were really fun to make. I'm, as always, having a blast just you know, doing these cards and shakers and glitter and rainbow, all the things. So, um, if you haven't seen my previous videos, I'll have them linked at the end of this one. I will also have my supplies, everything linked in the description box below the video, as well as a link to my blog post. So you can check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and I will be back very soon with another video. Bye.